Basque Country Stage 1 was an unreal time trial stage. Super big, big fan of time trials to start stage races, especially when they're as exciting as this, with sort of a, a long climb, like two and a bit kilometer climb at 7%, followed by a steep pinch towards the end. So Roglic won it, surprise, surprise, not really. I thought Pogaccio was going to do better. Going through the results sheet, Brandon McNulty, we're going to go through his power because he has it. Vingegaard, good ride, got a video on him. After winning Copy of Bartoli, we've got a video about him and UAE. He won a stage as well. Uh, Jebel Jais, he's super strong. Tobias Foss, Tour de Lavenir winner, what more? Pogaccio, not a great day out. Yates, good day out. Patrick Bevan, good day out. And Shelling as well. Aru. Aaron Baru, bit of a rogue one up there, and Shackman rounding out the top 10. Pretty strong top 10. 48 kilometers an hour is an absolute joke when you realize how hilly it is. Um, but anyway, let's get into some numbers. So, obviously, first of all, we're just two seconds different. So basically, we can assume that Roglic and McNulty did very similar power. They may have paced it slightly different, but overall, pretty similar. Um, so we're just going to look at the uh, TT itself. Normalized power, 482 watts for 17 minutes, which is outrageous. An average power of 435, which is 6.3 watts per kilo for 17 minutes, which is really, really good. It's not like off the chart good, um, but obviously there's a lot of times where he's not pedaling. We're going to get into the efforts and you're going to see how outrageous this power is and how good Roglic is at time trialing. So out the gate, he did 514, 517 watts for 5 minutes, 21 seconds which is seven and a half watts per kilo, which is outrageous. Just imagine going out and whacking seven and a half watts per kilo. You'd be like, oh, I'm pretty good at riding a bike. And then that's just like the beginning of your TT. You'd be like, okay, fair. Um, so that is bonkers. Uh, he didn't actually get the com up here. We'll, we'll have a look who got the com up here. Um, I think it was Oscar Rodriguez. There's something wrong with Oscar Rodriguez's power day because he says he, he got the com up here, but he didn't do very well in the, either of the splits. So... Basically, I'm pretty sure he got the calm up here. Uh, Thomas de Gendt did about seven watts per kilo, and Bookman did about seven as well. Um, time gaps, you know, similar. But obviously, it's a fast climb, so doing 500 watts is more advantageous than doing 400 watts, which is what Bookman would have done, which explains maybe some of the time differences. But yeah, super, super strong ride from him. Um, first five minutes, 523 watts, 7.6 watts per kilo. That is that is bonkers. So then you've got the long sort of downhill part here. Um, so if we look at the map, it's not too technical. Um, 61 kilometers an hour might have been a headwind because I think they're probably going a bit faster than that, 440 watts on downhill. Um, but anyway, super, super quick time. Nice cadence here, 97, 6.4 watts per kilo for this part. And then they sort of drop into town and it gets a bit more technical, hence the lack of pedaling, um, as you can see in the power data. And then sort of through town, this is minus 3%, 70k an hour. So you know, real need to do too many watts. Obviously, he's still doing 390, but it's not like massive. Uh, and the berg at the end is really important. So they get onto this sort of long flat part again. It, I think that's, there must be a dropout. I'm not sure he stops pedaling now, or maybe he does. No, I must just be stopped pedaling. But anyway, 470 watts down here for two minutes. That is that is crazy I, again. Um, but the, the last kick up the line is obviously very important. And he does 713, which is 10 watts per kilo for 53 seconds. So yeah, like that's ridiculously song so like for most people doing 10 watts per kilo fresh would be outrageous doing like just that's really good um but he just does it at the end of the at end of the tt doing seven and a half watts per kilo fresh also outrageous 7.6 i think was his best five minutes that's also outrageous like really 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 good and then in between just whacking out like 5.5 and a half watts per kilo and then I, I just don't understand how good these people are but i guess it does make sense they are world tall I'm not well tall. I'm a very average bloke on a bike. But even so, the numbers just, I'm just like, I, I, wow, like just crazy. I was like, oh, I need to do seven watts per kilo for five minutes this year. And he's just waxed out 7.6. But I guess that's why he's at Basque Country. Um, and I'm trying to get bronze medal in the team competition in Bucks 10 Mile TT or whatever it is. But anyway, whack him some kudos. Mad ride from Brandon McNulty. I think he was actually quicker than Roglic at the first split. Um, so personally, I think he's not very good at descending and lost a bit of time to Roglic because Roglic is not really very good at descending, but just has massive balls and just whacks it full on the descents. But I think Brandon McNulty is not that good at descending and probably knows it and doesn't crash very much. So it's like, oh, just take a little bit chill. Um, and maybe the wind changed slightly. Roglic went very early. Maybe Jumbo Visma did good stuff with the wind. But yeah, even so, absolutely bonkers performance all in all. 380 watts. 
um, so 435 watts, 480 normalized for 17 minutes. Some people say X power is better, but 450. But basically, for like you know, a 20 minute mountain top t mountain test, uh, he's doing like 6.7, is he 6.6? Easy, Brandon Minolte. He's a strong boy. Um, and this first part here is seven watts per kilo for 10 minutes, which again is like, if you're doing seven watts per kilo for 10 minutes, you're you're a strong person. Um, and he just he just does that and then has a TT to keep going to. So anyway, mental numbers. Um, buzzing for the rest of Basque Country tomorrow. I think is an uphill finish, but might not be an uphill finish. Let's have a look. Uh, it is yeah, a slight uphill finish, but a pretty hilly day out. So it should be a good one to watch. <coughs> so sorry about that. Almost died. But cheers for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.